welcome 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 back guys to my youtube channel this is your girl jalisa cogito and i'm super excited that you stopped by this channel we have a lot of fun here it's all about god all about the holy spirit he's always welcome here and we serve jesus christ as our lord so if you're new here go and like subscribe to our youtube channel it's a lot of fun share it with a friend if you find this encouraging so let's go ahead and talk about it y'all let's talk about it let's talk about it i know y'all saw the thumbnail i know you guys saw the intro let's get to it so i'm gonna give you some tips that'll help you mamas because you guys are wonderful moms i'm gonna help you guys really get to a routine that works for you for your baby's sleep time now some people you know like to refer to this as sleep training if you want to that's fine some people just like to call this a transition to bedtime or transition from cold sleeping to the crib or bassinet whatever you use for your baby to go to sleep i pray that this video would be encouraging and insightful and hopefully entertaining <laughs> let's pray heavenly father lord jesus have your way holy spirit we thank you for this day we thank you for these precious souls that are viewing this video we just thank it to you lord for the babies father god that you have birthed through these women lord we just pray in the name of jesus for healthy babies lord we pray father god just for wholesome families oh god we pray that your presence and your spirit will just flow in the lives of the families oh god and we pray in the name of jesus that you will give each family the wisdom lord the revelation oh father and and just the understanding, oh God, of what it looks like in their lives to have a great sleep routine, a great sleep regimen, if you may, for their family lifestyle. Well, we just thank you, God, for everything you're doing and it is to come and we bless your holy name. And we seal this prayer and every petition the families have petitioned up to you to help their family just flow with day to day life and flow on a schedule that they desire oh god i pray that you meet them where they are and i pray that they would heed to your instructions in jesus most precious name we pray amen all right guys so these are some tips that's work for me and my husband so i pray they're encouraging for you so first things first we just did it pray i strongly believe implementing prayer into your sleep routine for your children will benefit you it's not about no baby gonna sleep tonight lord in jesus name no 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 you want to make sure that you are praying god's will over the livelihood of your child how does god want your baby to rest is it on a routine basis is it is it a your baby needs an, uh, enough amount of food to be at a place to become sleepy is it that the lord would like for you to have that play time at a certain amount of time a certain amount of um you know screen time play time bible time devotion time prayer time you have to pray and act god's will over your family so ask god what is it that he would like your family to do that's first and foremost prayer that is the number one tip I would recommend to any parent because God knows all things. Okay, so let's go to the creator. Okay, so that's what's helped my family. We like to just pray and ask God, okay, God, what works for our baby? Okay, what does she need? Lord, show us what we need to do so that she can have a great night's rest, right? So number two, schedule that works for your family. Now, if you want to call it a routine, you can, but the reason why I said schedule is because with a schedule, things can fluctuate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> routine is like, you gotta stick to it, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I believe schedule is a better, you know, better way to approach this because babies grow. There are growth spurts and there is teething stages. There, I mean, babies are just different. Every baby is different. I've raised so many children at my jobs. I've babysat so many children for families in my family. And now being a mom, completely different. You know, all children are different and that's okay. That's the way God made us unique, right? So you have to implement the schedule that works for your family. Now I'm gonna put an example of what we do over here, but that's just a guide. I am no way trying to tell nobody 
how do we do this? Okay, <laughs> this is just encouragement and guide of what we do. And it's work for our family. So what I love is that I've learned my daughter. So I challenge you, this could be number three, but you can kind of implement this in the schedule as well. But I challenge you to learn your child. Now, you're probably gonna be like, girl, what? But I'm serious. <laughs> learn your baby, okay? Learn, okay, your personality. Does your baby like to eat? Does your baby like playtime? Does your baby like books? Does your baby like to have screen time? Does your baby like to clap and play and just cuddle time? Does your baby like bath time? Does your baby not like it? Does your baby, you know, you have to learn your child. Does your baby like to nurse twice before going to bed? Or does your baby like to have a bottle and then nurse and then go to bed? You have to learn your baby. And it takes time, mama. It's okay, mom. You're doing a phenomenal job. But you do need to learn your baby as best you can because they do change. <laughs> so what helped me is my daughter loves to eat, okay? I, I'm okay with that. Praise God, she's healthy, right? So for me, I had to learn I need to be on a schedule to accommodate my child. So for me, I started my baby on the bottle two weeks when she was like a baby, like two weeks old. I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm just saying that works for me because I'm somebody who likes to eat. And for mama to have enough milk, because I was breastfeeding her at the time, to have enough milk for her, I need to make sure that I'm taking my shower, I'm, I'm eating my food, I'm getting rest, a nap. I can take, let daddy, <laughs> you know, feed her with a bottle and they have that bonding time, that skin to skin time. But for me, I had to get a schedule so that way I can accommodate the needs of my baby. So that way when bedtime rolled around, she's not looking at me like, well, let's play. But she's ready to go to sleep. <laughs> so for me, learn your child. You, it's, it's imperative, mama. You want to make sure that you know what your baby needs. And when I say learn, that means study the child's cries. I knew what each cry meant when my baby would cry. I know you probably don't want to hear your baby cry a long time, but for me, I was okay with allowing my baby to cry at a good minute or good two, two minutes at max because I wanted to adjust my ear dates to my baby's needs because she can't physically talk yet. So I had to pay attention to her cries, her cues. What was she telling mommy that she needed? Mama, I'm hungry, mama, I want to cuddle, mama, I have a scratch. Sometimes babies are just itchy, you know? So just cuddling with them, you know, just, just rubbing them. Like I like to rub her back. I would just, you know, look at her fingers, see if she had a hangnail, you know, see her toenails. You know, is there any like little debris or any little hairs that got in there just from her playtime tummy time? Or the socks had a lint ball from laundry. Just, it could be anything. <laughs> but you just don't want to overreact and think, I just fed you, I just changed you, what do you want? No, no, no. If it gets to that point, walk away from the baby, take a minute, let the baby cry in the crib for a little bit, go to your room and say, okay, God, I give these feelings to you, I'm gonna calm down, okay, we good. It's okay to take a minute, we can take this time out, it's okay, mama, it's okay, you're a great mom, it's okay. And then you regroup, then you go back and take care of baby, okay? But. I've learned that you don't want to react on impulse <laughs> because you're delirious, half, you're halfway asleep, you barely ate something, you know, I, 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 I feel you, but you don't want to react just because you hear that baby cry again because sometimes it's gas. So learn your baby. It could be gas. It could be that your baby may be colicky. Your baby could just want, you know, more milk. Maybe you thought the baby was finished breastfeeding, but no, the baby was just waiting for this burp to come out and the baby wanted some more milk. So you have to learn what your baby likes. So, learn your baby. All right, so number four would be bath time. This is something honey was in our family all the time, okay? So we had a schedule every other day, okay? Now, in the beginning stages, of course, it'd be like a little sponge bath, you know, 
kind of wipe her down. Nothing like too heavily in the water, submerging or nothing like that. Cause we want to make sure her umbilical cord would, you know, fall off easy breezy, lemon squeezy. So, yes, yeah, that time, Mama's favorite time. I'm telling you, boy, cause I knew my baby would be sleepy. So see, I would wait till about 7.30 range, 8 o'clock range, to give my baby a bath because I didn't fed her, we had playtime. But see, I would have playtime with her every day. We would have worship time with the Lord. I would read her stories, only biblical, of course, y'all. Okay. And then also, um, my husband and I, we would pray over her. We would read her um, stories and scriptures from the Bible. And that was our routine. So when I would give her a bath, y'all it was awesome sauce okay because i would massage her so i recommend massaging the baby if you like to do that but i'm a big fan of baby massages okay so that's what i would do after her bath put her little uh nightgown sleeper on swaddle her really good now i know some people might be like oh lord swaddling but actually, it's really beneficial for babies to be swaddled because you want to make sure that they're nice and warm and you want a routine. So you can't start off doing something and then just fall off on the wayside. Consistency is super important for babies because they you're teaching them. They're not teaching you. <laughs> so you have to teach your baby a routine. Teach your baby a routine. And then as you learn your baby, it can become your schedule for your family. So basically that's pretty much what we did. So if you can if you see like some clips here and there, um, you'll see like how it worked for our family. So basically, um, she would go down to sleep with no problem as she grew older because we implemented in those steps early onset now when it comes to if you were co-sleeping for a certain amount of time and then you want to transition your child into their own room or maybe you have like a a, a corner room in your room or something like that that's separate from your um, husband in your space then you may want to consider a camera if you want to watch it if you're just a little bit you know not ready for that separate part you know that then get a camera if you're led i know the outlets out there as well if you're allowed to do that um we started out with a camera but over time we made too much noise at night <laughs> it kept alerting us and we we're like nah this is too much so we just check on her like momentarily every night like we would just check on her and over time we got to the place where she was good she was good y'all she was good so <laughs> Um, I did allow our child, our, our, okay? I did allow our child to sleep on her tummy when she was about five months. Now, I did observe her, I did watch her, I'm not saying you have to do that, but for our family, she was a tummy sleeper. I know, it's not the best, I mean, trust me, I've had all the classes, but she's a tummy sleeper. So that's what I'm saying. You have to learn your child. Some babies prefer their tummy. So what I did, I made sure that there was, of course, no stuffed animals, uh, nothing in her crib that would um, suffocate her or endanger her or anything in her way. Um, and just not just check on her, you know? So that's one thing that I'd recommend, you know, if you deliver your baby is not liking being on his or her side or his or her back. If they roll over, it's okay. It's not a bad thing. Now, if they, <laughs> if they are just have that motor reflex where they just wake up, <laughs> you may want to consider a swaddle that is already, um, it's like a sleep sack, sleep sack swaddle. I try to put some pictures of her, remember? But you may want to implement that into your routine so that way they're not just um, waking themselves up. If you are led to utilize a pacifier, by all means, that's what we did. But if you don't want to, then that's okay. That's okay. If you want to just utilize music, we have a diffuser in um, our baby girl's room. And we use one in our room, which is in our room as well. And also playing worship music. So this is definitely the ultimate. Are we on number six, number seven? Y'all know what number we on, right? Anyway, I would definitely recommend worship music. Okay. 
all day every day. But especially at night, if you don't like music for your child, if you don't want to implement music, pardon me, let me see over here, sorry. If you want to implement um, like the white noise or the laundry machine that's really popular for babies to get that soothing, calming, it's time to go to sleep mode, um, then that's fine. But I just would not play anything that is too lullaby. I mean, I know there's lullabies that people like, but in terms of sleeping, you want to make sure the atmosphere of your child's room is peaceful. So I recommend playing worship music because you want the atmosphere to be full of peace. Nothing hindering, disrupting, or causing you to wake up because you're like, hmm, that's a good lullaby. <laughs> you want to make sure that you have God's word just speaking life over your child. So as the child is dreaming, the dreams are full of God's goodness and also good. You don't want anything to hinder your child from peaceful night's rest. And that goes into what you and your husband decide on, what God's will is for your your lifestyle for the bedtime routine. So that's what worked for our family. And then um, as she's gotten older, she sleeps through the night. She slept through the night for, uh, starting at four months old. I guess you can call it sleep training, I guess. But that's what we implemented in our household. And it's worked well for our family. So I'll just kind of recap. Pray ultimate ultimate things to do for any routine anything in life any schedule anything that's new any adjustment pray empower pray god's will number two you want to make sure that you learn your child make sure you know your child because when you do that you're able to have a schedule a routine which is number three but learn your child because in order for you to learn your child you're going to be able to know what's best for your child, for that child to have a blessed night's rest. Schedule routine will kind of be both, because some people prefer to say routine, but schedule is really important because you want to get your baby on a consistency where they know, okay, mom and dad is about to put me to sleep, or okay, I'm about to go to bed, my body needs to rest. And if you don't want to say the word sleep or say the word nap with your child, just say it's time to rest your body. It's time to give the body a break. It's time to relax. If you want to use those words, that's very soothing. Soothing to a baby if you hear. Because they hear everything we say, y'all. Okay? And then also, um, bath time is so important. Y'all. Y'all. It's so imperative, y'all. Bath time. And also, baby massaging is really, really good to keep the baby nice and relaxed. And you can even apply essential oils if you're allowed to do so. Um, we use lavender or lemongrass. That's it. That's how we use our own baby. But if you're allowed to do so, you know, you can do that. If not, you don't have to. Okay. And definitely, you want to make sure that you're playing worship music in the room or anything soothing like the white noise is fine or the laundry. Um, playing that that's like really popular as well but just something soothing okay and then last but not least anoint your child this is one of the most amazing points that i feel don't not a lot of people talk about on videos but anoint your child every night my husband and i we love to apply the blood of jesus to our baby and this baby that's coming we love to apply the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus still works. It's never lost its power. Okay. So you want to make sure you're just applying the blood of Jesus to some oil. You know, just place it on your baby's temple lobe. Place it on the fingers, on the backside, on the neck. You just want to pray over every single body part. Pray over the mindset. Pray over the development. Pray over the fine motor skills. Pray, pray over the eating development. Pray over the sleep. Just apply by Jesus and declare and decree God's will and his word over your life, over the baby's life, over your future, over the future. Honey, apply the blood of Jesus and declare and decree what God leads you to say over your child. We love to pray in tongues over our baby girl before she goes to sleep. 
we she already know like we're we're gonna pray and definitely pray God's word over her life before she lays her head to pillow. So I hope this helps you all, and I pray that you'll stay encouraged and you won't give up. You'll fight a good fight of faith. What works was what works, and you have to take the time, put the work in and not waver and not, you may have to stand on what God has told you to do. And it's okay if it doesn't make sense to someone else. This is your child, this is your family. And you have to make sure you heed to God's instruction because he cares for you. And your baby is gonna be looking to, to you and Dada, or Mama Dada, what, what do I need to do? So you wanna make sure that you're training up your child in the way that he or she should go so that they will not depart from you. I love you guys. I am praying for each one of you and thanks for tuning in. And I will see you guys on the next video. Have a blessed, blessed night for us. Bye.